Hi everybody, welcome back. This is the third of many in the series where we put out the uh, choice to you guys, our loyal subscribers, as to what you'd like to see in these videos. And Honda Tricks is one of our subscribers. He's one of our very first subscribers. You've asked us to cover turbocharger repairs. Now, what I wanna basically do is explain to you where I'm coming from before I go into the actual video. In order to do that, you need to understand who we are and what experience and what we basically are about to, under the, to then understand and grasp our concept of how a turbocharger repair should be done. TurboDirect is a master distributor for all of these brands you see on the table here. Mitsubishi, iHar, BorgWarner, Garrett, etc. Now, we do not grey import products, we buy directly from these manufacturers, we rub shoulders with these guys, we've been to the manufacturing plants, we've been to the R&D centres, I've personally worked on the actual plant line, assembling turbochargers as well as balancing, as well as flow calibrating turbos. Turbo Direct also have a metallurgical lab in-house where we are able to do forensic reporting right down to micro and macro structure should it be required not just on turbochargers but obviously for any material. Uh, we have metallurgical engineers that work for us. Um, we've got probably the highest level, technical level of expertise in the turbocharger realm in South Africa and we also use these forensic reporting abilities to offer to some of these companies that you'll find their products on the table today. Now our core business is not turbocharger repairs, we're a distributor. We bring the product in, we distribute the product, yes of course we do repairs. And we do repairs completely differently to anyone else in our industry. And we do it better than anyone else for a specific reason or number of reasons which you'll see some of in this video. When we do a, a turbocharger repair, we do it in one of two ways. A new turbo or a core assembly, it's that simple. And there's specific reasons for that. And we'll go into those reasons when we go downstairs into the actual workshop shortly. What I'd like to mention is that all these turbochargers you see on the table and or parts that are supplied for these turbochargers are either used in repairs by repairers. So we will, we will supply shafts, comp wheels, back plates, bearing housings, repair kits, etc., to the repairers in the industry who then use them to do repairs however they choose to do in their own businesses. Uh, but what we do is we will actually go and employ the replacement of a core assembly provided the end housings are still intact and can be reused in order to renew the service life of a turbocharger. We've got access to the tolerances, the clearances, axial radial clearances and tolerances, bearing clearances and very technical information from the manufacturers which we will obviously use to first of all diagnose whether or not the turbocharger that's come in for a repair is inside of tolerance or not and obviously then we can quote the customer based on what the findings are. I'm gonna cut, cut that short for now. Let's go down into the workshop and we can carry on the video from there. All right guys, we're back in the workshop. What I'd like to do is uh, just show you a number of turbos that we've chosen uh, that have failed in different ways so that we can uh, give you an idea of how we're going to do a repair based on how these, these, these specific turbochargers have failed. Now, first of all, here's a turbocharger that has failed. Turbine head is broken off and for whatever reason, and it has gone and damaged the inside of the turbine housing. Now, the turbine housing is a critical component. Clearances are critical. And that specific point over there is very close to and on the radius profile of the turbine. If this clearance has been upset or changed outside of a tolerance, it will affect the fueling, it will affect the performance of the turbocharger and it will affect the reliability of both the turbo and the engine. Many companies out there that offer repairs on expensive turbochargers when large housings like this are involved will go and use, believe it or not, Prattly steel. Uh, they will weld these housings up, which is impossible to do because of the material composition. Many claim to be able to use a 100% nickel rod and they heat up the housing and they weld it and they cool it down in a controlled environment. You will always get cracking and growth where you've welded or next to 
unless you get the exact material composition and a piece of that same material to weld that up with. It is almost impossible to get right 100%. So what they land up doing is machining the radius profile outside of tolerance in, in case of a growth. We do not take chances like that at all. We will replace this turbine housing with a brand new genuine part or we will not take the job on. The remainder of this turbocharger will be replaced with brand new, being the core assembly, the entire rotating assembly. We will reutilize this compressor housing provided it hasn't been uh, damaged on the inside of any of the critical components. So this specific turbo will essentially be close to the replacement of a brand new turbo. We will replace turbine housing, always replace actuators whether they're working or not because you cannot, inside of a sealed unit, know what the condition of that diaphragm is. Uh, it might last you two weeks, it might last you six months, it might last you a year. But because of the fact that you can't see inside there, we don't take chances. Off it comes, a brand new unit, in this specific case, brand new turbine housing, core assembly. The only component that we might reuse will be the compressor housing, provided it hasn't been damaged on any of the critical components. Next, we have a turbo. I'm going to do an easy one here. This specific turbo broke a blade off on the turbine. When it made contact with the turbine housing, it snapped the shaft. The shaft is loose inside there, or the turbine head is loose inside there. New turbo, we don't even take a chance. Because on the opposite side of the compressor, the nut is missing, shaft nut, which means the rotating assembly was rotating at speed, came into contact with the end housing, the momentum that was carried when the rotating assembly came to a sudden stop, spun the nut off, the compressor housing is guaranteed to be damaged. And there's actually axial play, axial play on the actual axis that you can hear over there, which indicates that the compressor has touched the housing. In this specific case, throw the entire turbocharger away, new turbo. This specific unit here, you can see that there's been foreign object damage sustained to the compressor wheel itself. Over there. We will not disassemble the rotating assembly and remove the compressor wheel and replace just the compressor wheel and the bearings inside. And here's why. That's pretty simple to replace. On the back over here is a part number. We have stock of these compressor wheels. It's as simple as getting a new wheel, disassembling the rotating assembly, installing a new bearing kit, cleaning up everything. The shaft seems to be okay. We can always measure the tolerances. We can measure the surface roughness where the bearing faces actually run. We can go and check and verify that the ring groove, once the rings have been removed, are still square and they're inside of tolerance, etc. The amount of work involved in doing this is just not worth it. We would replace the entire core assembly. So this is what a core assembly basically entails or a CHRA, Center Housing Rotating Assembly. For those that don't know, I'm going to explain what that is to you now. Compressor wheel screws on. This here is a core assembly. This is a turbocharger. What I'm holding in my hand is a turbo. Center housing, rotating assembly. CHRA, core assembly. These are the names that are used to describe this. This turbo runs inside of its compressor housing and its turbine housing. It has an external actuator to control boost, but both these end housings are fit for reuse and we are able to reuse them. We will not open up this turbo or rotating assembly and replace internal components. We replace the entire thing. Here's why. Now I mentioned that we do things differently to everyone else and we do it better. Here's the reason why I say that it is a better repair than opening up and replacing internal components. We do not go and take your turbo, clean up your secondhand parts and resell them to you. Let that sink in. This here, if we had gone and taken this turbocharger apart, replaced internals, we would essentially be taking your, par your parts, cleaning them up and reselling them back to you. That is not how we do business. What we do is we will replace the entire rotating assembly. It comes in a box, factory assembled, factory balanced, it is already calibrated as an original, brand new, genuine OEM part, which then just goes and fits into the, comp the turbine housing, compressor housing, set orientation, and out it goes. This is essentially, once we've repaired it with a new core, a brand new turbocharger. This is a non-wearing part, 
provided the turbo hasn't exploded or ha failed in a catastrophic way. This is a non-wearing part. So they are able to be reused. Obviously, we check them for cracks and scale buildup, etc. That's another example of how we would do a repair. Here's another one. This specific turbocharger, as you can see, is quite dirty. And have a look at the turbine inducer blades. You can see they've sustained damage. Now the damage or the, 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 the damage sustained to these inducer blades have bent the blades in the opposite direction of rotation. That's rotation and the blades have bent in the opposite direction. Once again, when this happens, this specific rotating assembly will be inside of an imbalance. It will be operating out of balance. That vibration will cause abnormal wear where the actual shaft splits your ring, seals inside the bearing housing. Throw away. New core assembly, reuse this housing, reuse this housing because there's no cracks and we have repaired the turbocharger with a brand new genuine part, renewed its life with a factory assembled, factory balanced component. Traceability is something I'd like to speak about. If you purchase a core assembly or a complete turbocharger from Borg Warner, Garrett, IHR, Mitsubishi, any of the OEM brands, they come with a nameplate. On the nameplate, this one's been removed. On the nameplate, you'll have a part number identifying what turbo it is, and there's a serial number. The serial number is there specifically for traceability. Where it was made, when it was made, who balanced the unit, um, the balance tolerances, and there's a record of absolutely everything together with this assembly, balance, and production of the turbocharger. We can always go back in time and verify who it was purchased from, which country it was shipped to, which, the, which distributor was the one that purchased it from the OEM manufacturer, and obviously warranties apply and get backed up directly by the manufacturer. It does not cost us a cent to honor a warranty where it's a bona fide failure. We've got a number of other turbochargers here. This specific unit over here has failed in a completely different way. Turbine housing can be reused. Actuator looks new, but if you have a look at the compressor housing, the wheel has actually contacted the compressor housing and damaged it. In this specific case, because the price of this turbo is so cheap, we wouldn't even repair it. We wouldn't even put a core in there. We would replace the turbocharger with a completely new one. So the benefits of replacing either a core or a brand new turbo are the warranty backup you get from the manufacturer based on the fact that it's factory balanced, factory assembled. If we go and replace components inside of a rotating assembly and they fail again for a second time, there will always be a discussion as to, but hold on a second, company A replaced the bearings only, now the compressor wheel has failed, or we replaced the compressor wheel, your shaft has failed, or etc. etc. We don't get into those kind of uh, discussions. We put in a brand new component from the OEMs, factory balanced, factory assembled. If it fails and it's a bona fide failure, they replace it at their cost. We're just the middleman and we do the job for you. Peace of mind, reliability and service life renewed, guaranteed every time. Hey guys, so we're back from the workshop. Uh, I hope you guys learned something about the different turbochargers that I disassembled and showed you the failures of. Um, it is a very broad topic to discuss. There's a lot of things to discuss and there's lots of different options when choosing to repair a turbocharger. We didn't go over any passenger vehicle turbos there that are VNT. Uh, we didn't go over any turbochargers that are electro electronically controlled with rotary electronic actuators or diverter valves, N75 valves, or even actuators that are pneumatically controlled with position sensors on. So there's a lot more to this topic. I just touched briefly on it and I shared with you how we as TurboDirect do some uh, the, the repairs of turbochargers and you know although it is very very different to how others do repairs we are more expensive than other people obviously because of the fact that we use factory assembled factory balanced complete rotating assemblies in the repair of the turbochargers which we showed you downstairs so remember we spoke about the core assembly we spoke about the CHRA this is a brand new factory assembled, factory balanced unit, which basically gets installed into housings. And uh, we did discuss how the warranty works downstairs. So that is the way we choose to do repairs for the various reasons we've shared with you. However, there are customers of ours who are turbo repairers or trade customers who choose to use components that they purchase from us to do repairs. Obviously repairing a turbocharger replacing a component as opposed to the entire rotating assembly will be cheaper, 
Um, and obviously we do back up our trade customers by doing balancing for them and obviously f flow calibration for them, which we'll cover in another video. I hope that shed a little bit of light on repairs and I've opened the topic because I know there's going to be a lot of uh, questions, but please feel free to post them in the comment section below. Remember to like, subscribe. See you next time.